All right, so we're talking about glass. So let's go ahead and look at some of the properties of glass. And so in this module, uh, we're gonna look at the thermal properties of glass. All right, so what we're gonna look at now is the transition uh, in a silicate from a, a liquid or the liquid-like state to a solid state. And so we know that that transition from liquid to solid in a crystalline material, it's liquid to crystalline uh, solid. Uh, however, in amorphous, something different happens. And so I wanna look at this. And to look at this, um, I'm gonna look at specific volume. So specific volume is basically just volume divided by mass. And so it's basically the inverse of density. So normalized volume. Um, and what we're looking at here is the volume as a function of temperature. So the way I like to look at these graphs is starting at the highest temperature. So up here, we see that the volume is highest for this material at the highest temperature, right? That materials expand uh, with the exception, uh, as you know, of, of water when it solidifies. Um, so the volume is the highest. And then we see that the kind of splits off into different things. So for the crystal, we see that the volume uh, is decreasing in the liquid state, and then it has this really sudden uh, vertical drop at, to this new point, and it's labeling this as a crystal. And we see that when it's a crystal, it has a specific volume change that decreases with lowering temperature. And so this step change here that we call it is the melting temperature right? That's where the atoms rearrange from the liquid state into a crystalline solid. And so at that one temperature, there's a reconfiguration, and therefore we have a step change, and that's our melting temperature, right? So that's pretty typical uh, behavior that we see. However, if that same material um, keeps cooling, and it doesn't crystallize, um, then Two things, uh, basically, it's now going to become uh, an amorphous material. And so you can see here that um, it continues to decrease in volume as we decrease the temperature. And then it splits off again. And we see that it's labeled slow cooling and fast cooling. So it's effectively, there is a transition, which is much more subtle. So you see it, it's basically a, a slope change, uh, either here or here. So if, it, if this material is slow, uh, fast cooling, then you see the step change here at this temperature labeled TG2. And then if it's a slow cooled, you see that it continues to go down and then the step change, or sorry, the, the slope change is at a lower temperature for slow cooling. So this is uh, indicative of, a gla of glass behavior. And these temperatures um, are the what's called the glass transition temperature, or Tg. And so what we see here is that this property of the material changes with rate, right? Which is something we don't see with crystalline materials, right? We can't change the melting temperature based on how fast we cool it. That's an inherent property of the material. So we know that this glass transition temperature can do that. Um, but that kind of is, is uh, different than what we see um, in typical phase transformations like melting temperature, right? And so just let's kind of go over the definition of glass transition temperature real quick. So that's when something goes from a rubbery soft plastic state, so more like a liquid, um, to a rigid uh, brittle glassy state. And so this is the amorphous glass. So it's basically freezed in the liquid state or the, the rubbery state at the lower temperature, right? So that's the transition that happens at this temperature and it's much more subtle. So this plot shows it like this, but even in real life, it's, it's much more subtle than, uh, than this. And so the fact that glass transition temperature can change means that it's a different type of phase transformation. And a way we can actually do that is by looking at the first derivative of these quantities with free energy, which you might remember from uh, thermodynamics. Uh, so the first derivatives uh, of these um, uh, 
terms, so specific volume and then entropy, which we haven't talked about, but um, the uh, first derivative is uh, continuous, uh, which is basically uh, what we see uh, for, for these terms. So essentially that um, is telling us uh, that we have a continuous change uh, in free energy for uh, those terms. So essentially uh, glass transition is not thought of in the same way as the melting temperature uh, because of the step change we have for melting uh, with specific volume and then the the uh, slope change, the more gradual change um, for Tg for specific volume and the same thing for entropy. So if we look at entropy that acts the same way. For a crystal we have a step change in entropy when we change phase uh, but then for the glass transition it's a, um, a slope change. It's much more subtle. So let's interrogate this kind of concept a little bit more by looking at a couple different thermal properties. So we're going to look at heat capacity as a function of temperature and thermal expansion as a function of temperature. And so when we look at these quantities now, um, we see that the crystal has a step change in heat capacity, but also the glass does too. And the same thing for thermal expansion. The um, crystal has a step change in thermal expansion for the changing of phase, and the glass does as well. So these properties show a different type of trend um, and if we look at these terms, so alpha for um, the, uh, here I kind of have it reversed, so alpha is actually for thermal expansion, and C sub P is the heat capacity. So if we look at these, we see that the second uh, derivatives uh, with respect to uh, Gibbs free energy are discontinuous, and that's what gives us the step change. And so this shows um, a different behavior than what we saw with uh, specific energy, or sorry, specific volume on the previous slide and entropy here. So uh, these tell us, that, so this kind of all together uh, suggests that glass transition is not a typical phase transformation, it's a second order phase transformation more in line with the uh, ferromagnetic phase transformation than something like the melting temperature. So that's just something to keep in mind that glass transition temperature is unique, uh, it's not exactly like what we'd expect with melting temperatures and so forth.